Biggest and fastest single-seater formula saw its first action at Brands Hatch three weeks ago. A grid that lacked a bit in numbers, but lacked nothing in quality. Andrew Gilbert Scott, a former winner of the Formula Ford Festival, led the field in the Virgin Atlantic 3000. Behind him, Marco Greco and the hard-charging NEC car of Gary Brabham. Brabham, who had such a spirited finish to last season's Formula 3 championship, was swiftly into second, behind a man who was making a return to the British scene after doing his recent racing in the Far East. The British Formula 3000 championship will be run over 10 rounds and provides the ideal bridge between Formula 3 and the big budgets required for the European Formula 3000 championship and Formula 1 beyond. For the drivers, it offers virtually Formula 1 style pace and performance. And the battle in the early laps between Andrew Gilbert Scott in a Cosworth powered Raynar and the Australian son of the former world champion Sir Jack Brabham was the kind of high speed action that the crowd had come to see. Then approaching the 20 lap mark things got a little too close as the cars swept down to paddock at 160 miles an hour. Brabham gestures angrily as Gilbert Scott clips the wing of his Raynar. Second place was lost as Brabham has to come into the pits for a new front end. Andrew Gilbert Scott went on to unchallenged victory. Behind him, Roland Ratzenberger and then Brabham setting a new outright short circuit lap record, but settling for third. The first round had certainly produced a talking point. My view was I drove around the inside of Paddock. I, I didn't do anything. I didn't drive or weave. I was just driving around the inside. So uh, if Gary was on the inside, then uh, that was his fault, not my fault. I was in front. People can make it hard, and I don't care if they make it hard, and I can't get past the 10 or 20 laps when they do stupid, idiotic things like that. And 170 miles an hour could end up in the spectators. Brabham was a reluctant passenger on Gilbert Scott's victory lap, but by Thruxton round two, he had his revenge planned. I spoke to my father after the race, actually, and he says, well, there's only one way to stop that. And I said, oh, yeah, what's that? Qualify in front of him, you don't have these problems. <laughs> well, that was another plan that didn't work out, because at Thruxton, Brabham is on the front row, but his great rival, Andrew Gilbert Scott, is quicker. It's the second round of the British Formula 3000 Championship and Murray Walker is the commentator. In pole position for the second time, Andrew Gilbert Scott in his APA Reynard Ford. Back to UK racing after a year in Japan. Third on the grid, Austrian Roland Ratzenberger. Second in the first round at Brands Hatch in another Reynard Ford. And those are the eyes of Brazilian Marco Greco, fourth on the grid. It's a dry track after earlier rain, in fact, ideal weather conditions for this 40-lap, 94-mile race. The lap record held by German Christian Danner, 1985, 69.4 seconds, and that's a speed of 122 miles an hour. In car with Gary Brabham, away they go. On the right is Andrew Gilbert Scott, going up to Allard. It's Gilbert Scott leading, Brabham alongside him, then Roland Ratzenberger in third position, Marco Greco in fourth place. Down to the complex, the right-hander at Campbell, and Greco hits Brabham, goes round him, Brabham spins off. You can see them streaming through, and Gary Brabham spins it round in the right direction and the wrong direction. He's done a 360 degree turn, gets away last of all. He's got everything to do for the second race in succession. So now watch Gary Brabham on this replay. Watch his right hand, the gear lever, five speed gearbox. Andrew Gilbert Scott on the right. Up to the right-hander, coming up to Campbell. There's the gearbox of Andrew Gilbert Scott's Reynard in front. Into the apex, and thump! That's Greco hitting at the back side. Great thump at Campbell. You can see the flag marshal with the yellow flag, and a very angry Gary Brabham rejoins. Just listen to the roar of his four DFV engine and watch the rev counter.
out of Seagrave. On to the rest of the lap, and at the end of it, Andrew Gilbert Scott is just leading Roland Ratzenberger. In the background, it's Albacetti third. Over the line, completing the lap. And now, Gary Brabham, in car, up to the club chicane, second gear, 30 miles an hour into it, a lot faster out of it, he's catching the tail enders, past Roger Orgy. Now that's Richard Peacock in front. Over the line goes Brabham, past Peacock, and now he's approaching the complex. Two down, seven to go. Into Campbell, second gear, Cobb, third gear. On to Seagrave, the right-hander. Then the very quick approach to Noble, the left-hander. So, Gary Brabham making his way through the field, but up front, Andrew Gilbert Scott is still leading Roland Ratzenberger. Out of Goodwood, on to Village and Church. Fifth gear, 160 miles an hour from these three-litre cars. And Roland back, and Ratzenberger's challenging. Woodham Hill coming down to club. Ratzenberger's going through, takes the apex first. So Ratzenberger leads. Gilbert Scott second. Albacetti is in third position, and I think Andrew Gilbert Scott must be in trouble. Ratzenberger goes into another lap, leading this time. And Gary Brabham now is in sixth place. He's catching Tony Trimmer. You can just see Trimmer's car ahead. So that's a lap completed for Brabham. Round Allard and into the pits now comes Greco. Marco Greco retiring from sixth position. Seagrave. Brabham is almost with the fifth place Tony Trimmer, the ex Formula One Lotus driver, not at all happy in his 1988 march. We're riding with Gary Brabham in the Reynard. To Goodwood, fourth gear. He's going past Trimmer, fifth position. And Gary Brabham has broken Christian Danner's 1985 lap record. And look, he's really trying. And ahead of the Flying Sir Jack's number two son are Pedro Chavez and Antonio Albacetti. Over the line, Ratzenberger there is now leading Gilbert Scott by two seconds. But here's Gary in the NEC Reynard zeroing in on Pedro Chavez, fourth in the white Reynard. Chavez in Formula Ford 1600 last year, so he's doing well here. And once again, Brabham can see the target in front of him. It's getting closer and closer. All Brabham's considerable experience in Formula Ford 2000 in sports cars. And now Chavez is on his left and he goes through. Brabham up into fourth position, out of Seagrave. On his way to Noble, on to Goodwood. Fourth gear, 150 miles an hour. And now for Albacetti, Gilbert Scott and Ratzenberger. Can he do it? Club corner. And coming out of it, Antonio Albacetti in the red car is just in front of Gary Brabham, gaining fast. Albacetti's understandably looking a bit ragged. But Gary Brabham's handling this 450 horsepower Reynard like a veteran. Campbell, the right-hander, Cobb, the left-hander, Seagrave, this is it, the right-hander. Coming up to Noble, the left-hander. Albacetti clips the apex, swings into the right-hander, and this is Gary Brabham's opportunity. He's right up now. Now, look at this. The cars in front of him getting closer and closer all the time. They're doing 150 miles an hour, and Gary Babham is in effect driving blind. Incredible. He's attacking past Albacetti into third position. Gary Brabham has now passed Peacock, Orgy, Trimmer, Chavez, and Albacetti. There's only Gilbert Scott and Ratzenberger left. And Roger Orgy retires the Reynard. He hadn't even sat in it before today. And a club corner, Ratzenberger is now well ahead. Andrew Gilbert Scott had vibration problems with the car in the warm-up lap, and it looks as though they're back. And look, Gary Brabham is in with a chance, because he is now catching the second place man. It's Reynard's first, second and third, Ratzenberger, Gilbert Scott and Gary Brabham.
out of the complex. A fine drive by the Austrian Roland Ratzenberger after an awful 1988 in Formula 3. He's lapping the tail enders. He was second at Brands Hatch. Can he hang on and win here today at Cruxton? Just look at the speed differential there. Ratzenberger absolutely on the limit, takes the wide line, that's the correct line, coming up to the fastest part of the circuit. Completing another lap as he approaches club corner. Now, what is the gap going to be between Roland Ratzenberger here as he goes into club and Gary Brabham as he comes out of it? Well, there's Gilbert Scott, five seconds. That is Peacock, and here is Gary Brabham, nine seconds behind Roland Ratzenberger, in car with Gary Brabham. He takes Peacock. Now it's Andrew Gilbert Scott, getting closer all the time, up to the complex. Ratzenberger the leader, number 16. Now look for Gilbert Scott, and it's four, five seconds behind, and there is Gary Brabham, another four seconds behind Gilbert Scott. So there's nine seconds between the leader and the third place man. And Roland Ratzenberger from Salzburg, six years racing experience. He's a fitness fanatic. He won the prestigious Formula Ford Festival in 1986. Last year, a bad year in Formula 3, but not at all a bad one in BMW M3 saloon car racing in Britain. Is he going to win his first Formula 3000 race? It's looking a bit chancy. Gilbert Scott isn't far behind him, and there is Brabham closing up all the time on Gilbert Scott. Over the line. Gilbert Scott is definitely in trouble. This is the man who won at Brands Hatch, Andrew Gilbert Scott. After a season's racing in Japan, he's raised the money to race in Britain in Formula 3000. This is the result, and we're with Gary Brabham. Absolutely with Andrew Gilbert Scott challenging for second place. Going through on the inside at Noble. No, he's not, because Andrew Gilbert Scott closes the door, and Gary Brabham surges through on the inside of the right-hander at Goodwood and is up into second position. The gap now between the race leader, Roland Ratzenberger, in this really exciting Formula 3000 race at Cruxton, the second of the championship this year, is about seven seconds into club. This is Ratzenberger, the leader. Now, where is Gary Brabham? Look back, there he is, Brabham second. Andrew Gilbert Scott in third position. Six seconds is the gap now, onto the complex. There's Brabham. What a beautifully smooth drive this is of Gary Brabham's and Roland Ratzenberger's for that matter. Into the complex again. And the amiable Spaniard Antonio Albacetti, a fine fourth in the Cavendish Reynard, goes past Richard Peacock to lap him. It's only his third Formula 3000 race, Albacetti. He's showing a lot of promise. When he's got some more experience under his belt, he's going to be a man to watch. There goes Peacock, lapped by Albacetti. And at club corner, it's Ratzenberger. And Brabham, four seconds behind. Gary Brabham really flying. Fastest lap after fastest lap. And into another one. And Gary Brabham can see the leader ahead of him now. He knows what he's got to do. They're all using even slick tyres in this race. And on to the complex. Roland Ratzenberger lapping Roger Orgy. Now, is he going to get in the way of Gary Brabham? It doesn't look like it. Brabham goes through on the inside. Just two seconds behind Ratzenberger, another lap record for the flying Australian. To Noble, to Goodwood, that is Gary Brabham. Ratzenberger is ahead of him. How far ahead of him? There he is, down to club corner. 
And now Gary Brabham has just got one man to pass to take the lead in this second Formula 3000 race of the year. And he can see him getting closer and closer ahead of him. As inter club they go together. Ratzenberger in the Reynard. Brabham in the Reynard. Round Allard. This is the right hander here. Up to the complex. And Gary Brabham has got that wonderful feeling of knowing he has passed everybody in this race except one man. But things are going with him, that he's got his racing rhythm, that he can see Ratzenberger's car getting bigger and bigger all the time, and he's just got to pick his moment to pass. Is it going to be a noble? No, not nearly. Maybe a good one at the right-hander. You can see the gap closing up between them as they come out of Goodwood. Now, surely Gary Brabham is going to take the lead as he changes up into fifth gear, approaching 160 miles an hour. Coming down to club by way of Woodham Hill and he is going to take Ratzenberger. This is it, Woodham Hill. The final run down to club corner and Gary Brabham goes out of Ratzenberger's slipstream into the lead from last to first. An amazing drive. Now he really has just got to keep it going to win his first Formula 3000 race for NEC, for Reinhardt, for Ford, for Bromley, the team that won the 1988 European Championship with Roberto Moreno, and of course for himself. But Ratzenberger is making a terrific charge. He has speeded up, he was going slower, he has definitely speeded up, and it's not going to be an easy thing for Gary Brabham. Into club, clean and crisp. And now, into the last lap. And Andrew Gilbert Scott is 26 seconds behind. There he is, coming out of club corner. Third behind Ratzenberger, but he can still lead the championship with Brabham if he stays where he is on this last lap. So Gary Brabham still leading, but a terrific charge by Ratzenberger. He's fighting back. A new lap record by Roland Ratzenberger at 131.6 miles an hour. And there is the gap. It is something like three seconds. And Ratzenberger's closing on Brabham as Brabham goes through on the inside. Laps the tail ender right at club, left at club, right out of the last corner. And Gary Brabham wins by two seconds and now leads the championship with Andrew Gilbert Scott. A great race to watch, and for Gary... No worries. <laughs> well, there might have been just a few, but Gary Brabham performing wonders to come from the back of the field to the front to lead home Roland Ratzenberger and Andrew Gilbert Scott. Brabham winning at an average speed of over 128 miles an hour. His first victory in Formula 3000 racing, but after starting from the front row, it's fair to say that by just the second corner, victory looked very unlikely indeed. Got clouded um, up the back. I don't know who, even who hit me. Um, it was pretty hard enough to knock me right round. And I, I nearly came in the pits to check the car because it was such a big bang that I thought, well, you know, I should come in and check it over. But it seemed all right halfway around the lap, so I just kept going. Um, really went, went for it for the beginning, um, passed everybody and then got in the lead and then tried to, to have a, um, a margin, close margin between myself and Roland Ratzenberger. And every time we got too close, I'd pull away again. Um, but look, the rear wing started delaminating and um, it's in the rear, the rear of the car's in a sorry state. This was, was a result of the it. bang, was it, on, on, yeah, on the first yeah. lap? it's lucky to make it. So handling problems halfway yeah, around as well? Yeah, it was just twitchy. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It didn't affect the handling that much, but it was just... You know, if something broke on the car, and I was wary aware of that the whole race through, that if something happened out the back, I end up in Basin State. <laughs> <laughs> Does this really make up for what happened in round one? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's, um, the car and the team's done a fantastic job, um, <clears throat> and we just proved that we're the team to beat now, and uh, see if we can do it again next time.